Ida's Short Questions with Answers, Look Back in Anger by Osborne, published by Friends Book Corner, Nilkit, Dacca, delineate the life of John James Osborne. Osborne was born on the 12th of December 1929 in a London suburb. His father, Thomas Godfrey who was a commercial artist, died when Osborne was about 12. Later his mother Nellie Beatrice, a barmaid sent him to a far away boarding school. The boy was unhappy there and left the school in 1949. And then his education ended. Like Jimmy he was known as an angry young man, though Osborne was successful unlike Jimmy. He tried his talent and started acting at the Empire Theatre in Sheffield. Soon he became an actor come manager come playwright. He acted in Don Juan, The Death of Satan, Cards of Identity and The Good Woman of Sets. He also won many awards and distinctions. John Osborne's married life was also remarkable. His first marriage to actress Pamela Elizabeth in 1951 lasted for six years. In the same year he tied a knot with another actress Mary Ewer who acted successfully as Alison at the first production. The year 1963 was also outstanding. The end of the second marriage and the beginning of the third with Penelope Gilliatt, a journalist. It was also dissolved in 1967 and the fourth marriage took place in the following year with the fourth, Jill Bennett. Then he died on the 24th of December 1994. What kind of a man is Jimmy? He is a boor rude, inconsiderate, self-pitying and self-dramatizing intellectual rebel, though he is a man of education living in poverty. He is, no doubt, a frustrated wretch who does not deserve our sympathy. He is a little sadist and very much an exhibitionist one who draws attention by behavior. He has married above himself to take revenge foolishly. His prolix wordy, verbose style which is often witty but always cruel, makes him a brutish insensitive, harsh husband. He drives his wife mad by criticizing her constantly. He makes her friend his mistress paramour, lover. Jimmy is certainly an exceptional type of person. He usually takes things negatively. He does not acknowledge even the most precious thing in a woman, her virginity before marriage. He expresses his idea regarding it most unscrupulously. He remains unhappy with his conjugal life and his daily routine especially on Sunday all through the play. Still he does not change his attitude. He stays where he is. He has no seriousness in taking initiative to make his conjugal life congenial and daily life smooth and free from monotony. It seems he has been enjoying his miseries and behaving like a sadist. It also seems that he has been waiting foolishly for an off chance to make things better. How does Jimmy criticize Alison? Jimmy continually finds faults with Alison especially during her ironing the clothes for long. He does not like her being noisy as he says she is so clumsy awkward in movement or manner. The way she jumps on the bed, as if she were stamping pressing by a foot on someone's face, and draws the curtain's mosquito nets back with a great clatter loud noise by hitting objects, in that casually carelessly destructive way of hers. It's like something launching a battleship. He criticizes severely at times such as he calls her lady pusillanimous frightened of taking risks in the sense that she is lacking some courage, inspiration and determination in her. He expresses his sheer total dissatisfaction because she never mentions his name in her letters to her mother as if Jimmy is a dirty word. Jimmy goes even too far by saying if only something, something would happen to you, and wake you out of your beauty sleep. If you could have a child, and it would die. In other words, his criticism is not just rampant but also severe. It is really too much for any woman, let alone for such a lady Alison. And her perseverance is remarkable and beyond description. What are the misfortunes in Alison's life? Alison's misfortunes know no bound. And all these miseries come from such an unmatched conjugal life. She is from upper middle class and her family background is far better than Jimmy's. Besides, Alison herself is a sophisticated and perseverant lady. Still, Jimmy keeps irritating and yelling at her. He even pinches as she was virgin before marriage. He was so irritating and complaining that she hesitated to disclose her pregnancy to her husband. 
At one point during pregnancy she had to leave her husband. Actually, she underwent a series of turmoil. Subsequently, she had an accidental miscarriage. Her tragedy does not end here. She had no alternative to returning to her husband who had been living together with her friend Helena since leaving Jimmy. Some people suffer a little but frequently. Some others suffer vehemently but rarely. Unfortunately, Alison's sufferings are not only all days and nights but also very traumatic at times. Her condition was such a one after her return that many people cannot even imagine it. She lost her unborn child and was horrified with it. She had no other choice than returning to Jimmy for companionship, love and care. And to her dismay, she found out her friend Helena had been his mistress. What has ennobled Alison and her father? Jimmy was far inferior to Alison in every angle. It is good that Jimmy was a graduate but his education meant nothing in practical sense. He could not manage to stay with any job. Moreover, he could not give her peace, nor could establish any financial platform which Alison deserves beyond doubt. So to say Alison's father had every reason to oppose Alison's marriage. Still he tells Alison that he and her mother should not have opposed their marriage. Of course it is good that he tries to convince Alison not to leave her husband as it should be the case in everyone else's example. Similarly, Alison had fortitude all her marital life. She hardly broke her patience. At one point he could not but leave Jimmy. To her utter frustration she lost her unborn child. At the end she had to return to her husband for love, care and companionship. In return she saw her friend Helen live together with her husband during her absence. After all these she behaved in such a way as if she herself was responsible. After keeping all these under considerations we can certify that both Colonel Redfern and Alison are noble. How was Colonel Redfern as a father and a husband? The Colonel was a sincere, sensible and dutiful father in various ways. Soon after Helena's telegram he came to Alison. He tried to convince her as a sensible father should. He was also kind-hearted and lenient towards his son-in-law even after knowing his insensible and wretched attitude towards Alison. His philosophy of marriage is also positive. He expresses his doubt that anyone could marry with a revenge motive as Alison had termed Jimmy's marriage. Not only that, he also termed Alison's decision to leave Jimmy was momentous and unreasonable. Colonel Redfern used to reminisce his past life in India so much that anyone would guess his lacking seriousness. Still it is well marked that he was also a dutiful husband. He managed with Alison and did not waste his time to return home because of his wife who was worried about Alison and was not physically well. It is quite natural for an old man like the Colonel, who had a great work experience, to avoid many such familial responsibilities. Interestingly, he did not even forget to appreciate Helena for her sincerity and concern over Alison and the telegram. How far is Cliff modest and humble? Discuss in brief Cliff's position in the family, Cliff's modesty and humility are marked when he tells Alison how simple and rustic he is. He tells that Jimmy and he are from the same working class. He even expresses his interest in improving himself by reading newspapers. He is so humble that he says to Alison he is stupid and must choose a wrong type of woman who will dominate and bully him in their conjugal life. Actually, he is very informal with Alison. Most interestingly he fondles, embraces and even kisses her but in such a way that it neither embarrasses her nor raises any suspicion in Jimmy's mind. In reality there was no such sexual motive or implication either. His position in the family is like a middleman. He does not hold a true position but in the beholders those who see eyes he plays a significant role in the family. He is really a true well-wisher of both Alison and Jimmy. He is a real friend and certainly a peacemaker. That is why Alison's decision to leave Jimmy was greatly disappointing and regrettable to Cliff. He feels totally saddened on account of the imminent breakup. What is Cliff's role in the play? Discuss in brief Cliff's virtue, the plot construction cannot be complete unless some characters other than the protagonists are delineated. Here the protagonist is Jimmy. Without the characterization of Alison and Cliff, 
Jimmy's characterization cannot be clear. The fact is obvious that Cliff is a trifle character compared to the spouses. Still the main purpose his character serves is the contrast between him and Jimmy. Helena's characteristics are also revealed by Cliff's unfavorable reactions. Moreover, he highlights some of Allison's qualities by dint of his deep and sincere attachment to her. Basically, Cliff is virtuous in several ways. If he is contrasted with Jimmy, it will be clear how virtuous Cliff is. Jimmy starts living together with Helena in absence of Allison. On the other hand, Cliff has been attached with Allison deeply and confidentially. Still Cliff does not imply any sexual urge or corruption with her. Jimmy himself aptly describes that Cliff is a loyal, generous and good friend. He also describes to Helena that Cliff is a sloppy careless slash slack slash effortless, irritating bastard. But he's got a big heart. You can forgive somebody almost anything for that. How far do you agree with the fact that Look Back in Anger is a one-man play? In every way Jimmy Porter controls the whole play. And this has become mainly because he is the principal talker all through the drama. He made speeches frequently and mostly long. Jimmy has put forward his views on bishops, the class distinction, the hydrogen bomb, the church going, the rituals and religions practices, the politics the traditional posh newspapers, the jazz music, the general women and the miseries of humans. All other characters have been portrayed to compare and contrast with Jimmy. Most importantly, Cliff has been a glaring example of Jimmy's opposite in nature. They are diametrically different from each other. Cliff is as submissive as Jimmy is aggressive. Allison is no match with Jimmy for marital life. She is as forbearing as Jimmy is intolerant. Jimmy talks even more than a hundred talk together. Actually, the author intentionally made him a spokesperson of the post-war youth. That is why the author was indifferent to the other character portrayals. As a result, the play has turned into a one-man play. How was Jimmy's childhood? Jimmy's childhood was really pathetic. At the age of ten he lost his father. His father had been ill for long. His illness was uncared even by his mother. He was dying slowly and pitifully. It was doubly unbearable. In one way as a little boy, he kept seeing his father's dying and in the other, most deplorably he panicked at her mother's indifference to his father's physical predicament. At his age of ten as a son he tried his best to help his father. On the other hand, his mother did not look after his father at all. He was absolutely shocked at his mother's indifference to her husband's dying illness. Here according to Jimmy one thing is clear that no one can grow up mentally without some severe sufferings. He comments that Helena has not undergone any such grave suffering. That is why she has not grown up mentally. Jimmy tells that Helena needs her whole life to learn what he learnt in his childhood. Here the irony is that Jimmy has learned some reality thing out of his father's gradual death but failed to learn how to succeed how to be happy and how to make others happy. What role does Jimmy's marital life play in the drama? This is one of the dominant roles in Look Back in Anger. Such a callous and crude husband is undoubtedly unwanted for any wife, let alone for such a wonderful, gentle, persevering and virgin wife, Alison. Jimmy's non-stop verbal attacks to his wife surely make the audience highly sympathized with Alison. His allegations against Alison regarding her ceaseless ironing, her lack of animation and enthusiasm are true. Still we cannot blame her if we look into the reasons. She can neither protest his wrongdoings and ill manners nor can hide her indifference and lack of warmth towards her husband. The author has shown the horrible sides of a marriage if the couple are unmatched. Alison is as compromising, social and forbearing as Jimmy is uncompromising unsocial and impatient. Here the lesson is clear enough to make those viewers or readers of this play, who are still unmarried, derive benefit out of the play. It is also true that in different ways Osborne has been in Jimmy's favor mainly because he comes from the underprivileged class of people, more specifically the working class. What do you know about Alison's firmness? Present a brief contrast between Jimmy and Alison, 
Alison is submissive, considerate and gentle. She does not retaliate or overreact during Jimmy's irritating complaints. It does not necessarily mean that she is always relaxed and flexible. She advice to wait until Jimmy returns from London. She ignores even her father's warning that she should think before taking a big step. In all respects Jimmy and Alison are diametrically opposite to each other. She is wonderful, gentle, persevering and virgin. Contrarily, Jimmy is uncouth, violent and impatient. His physical corruption is also obvious when his illicit relationship with Helena in absence of Alison is considered. Alison is sophisticated as she comes from the upper middle class. Unfortunately, Jimmy is complex but unsophisticated as he comes from the working class. Whereas Alison saw her father's golden days in India, Jimmy observed his father's gradual death without the care of his mother minutely with the saddest feelings. Here one thing is very interesting. Alison has not seen such a horrible past but learned how to behave and live with sacrifice and compromise. On the other hand, Jimmy has become mature because of this unbearable experience but failed to live with cooperation, mutual coexistence and relaxation. What do you know about Alison's forbearance patience? Alison is obviously impressive and is never feeble or spineless. Her forbearance is noteworthy as she remains calm during Jimmy's brutal attacks upon her and her family. What it means is that her power of fortitude is unforgettable, though at one point she can bear no more and leaves Jimmy with an unavoidable influence from her friend Helena. Even after all these, she returns to Jimmy groveling begging, pleading and crawling creeping, scuttling. It is mainly because her fate has treated her most cruelly. Her miscarriage has crushed her spirit and driven her towards the comfort of companionship, help and support. One thing we should bear in mind, excess of anything is bad. Forbearance must also have its end. As she was annoyed interminably by Jimmy, she kept her patience intact but she had to outburst by leaving Jimmy when Cliff and her father have tried most to convince her not to leave Jimmy. In the end she lost her patience thoroughly and left Jimmy who has always been a horrible example to Alison. What is the significance of their playful game of bear and squirrel? Many poets hover over an imaginary world. For example, John Keats escapes from the cruel world and visits the imaginary world of the nightingale. Similarly, people can escape from their unhappy moments through participating in different games. And in case of a marital discrepancy, mismatch and at the couple's unhappy moments a game can play the most healing part of the relationship. In this connection look back and anger is a glaring example. Here Jimmy and Alison pass an unorganized conjugal life. They are diametrically different from each other. They cannot come to a certain conclusion. They are the most mismatched couple. Here Alison expresses that the bear and the squirrel game is the only way to cope up with together as Jimmy remains angry and attacking verbally. It plays the most significant role when they reconcile and play the game at the end of the play. They realize the cruelty of the real world. By the game they create an imaginary world where they can live peacefully. This is how such a game can make us escape from the real but painful world. What is the Edwardian Age? In perspective of British history, the Edwardian Age is significant for British culture in the 20th century. According to Jimmy the Edwardian generation is the last generation which could define and combat for the commendable causes. Jimmy mentions the world wars when the British colony expanded and the bravery of the British soldiers was unforgettable. In course of time the British influence has subsided and the Britons stopped their intellectual pursuits. As a result, Jimmy considers himself as an Edwardian and subsequently, he feels stuck in the modern world. Alison tells her father that Jimmy called the Colonel a plant left over from the Edwardian wilderness that can't understand why the sun isn't shining anymore. What Jimmy has meant is that the Colonel cannot forget his golden past foolishly. Afterwards Redfern tries to understand why Jimmy married her. Then Alison says he may have married for revenge. Now Redfern is confused why young people cannot marry for the cause of love. Later the colonel shows his generosity by conceding to Alison that Jimmy is probably right in calling him an old Edwardian. 
What is the necessity of suffering in life according to Jimmy? Jimmy is mentally shocked and perplexed at the last days of his father. Still he realizes the fact that these days have taught him the real meaning of life and reality. He tells the same thing to Helena that she cannot learn in her whole life what he has learnt in a short time as he has undergone the intense suffering. That is why Helena cannot feel actual emotion. Broadly speaking, as Alison undergoes the traumatic sufferings after the miscarriage, she has grown into the real world. As this is the case, she represents the feminine domestic life of working class England in reality. Inwardly, Osborne is unhappy to see that the society lacks in liveliness and passion. Still we should bear it in mind that learning has various sides. What Jimmy has learned from that suffering cannot help him in his life. This learning has rather deteriorated his life after marriage. On the other hand, Alison has always been reasonable in the sense of perseverance and sacrifice in conjugal life accordingly. Unfortunately, Jimmy is too obstinate and complaining for Alison to make their life happy and peaceful. How is nostalgia a part of life? Everyone cares their past which is unforgettable. The only difference is that some enjoy remembering it, some others stir their sorrows unnecessarily and still some others learn much from their mistakes in their past life. In other words, the past keeps playing a substantial role in a character. Here in Look Back in Anger we frequently see both Jimmy and the Colonel are in a complicated web of nostalgia. The Colonel can neither forget his majestic life in India nor can make his life cheerful in England. Nostalgia keeps playing with his present life. Similarly, Jimmy is caught in the same web. Still here lies the real difference between Jimmy and the Colonel. Jimmy sees the aching and awful past. And his present life has not changed much. On the other hand, Colonel Redfern compares his gorgeous past to the present life in England with his wife. He was too happy to express it properly and is still happy now, compared to Jimmy. The only problem is that his present life is without the excitement and charm that he misses much. What is the inevitability of Cliff's character in Look Back in Anger? Cliff is an innocent character all through the play. His sincerity and impartiality is imitable. He keeps proper terms with Jimmy and Allison. He delivers the masculine friendliness and sympathy to Jimmy who fails to find it in his wife. Cliff also provides Allison the affection and tenderness that Jimmy cannot give to his wife. Towards the end of the play in absence of Cliff, they reconcile and start playing the bear and squirrel game, which creates a fantasy world. What it means is that the presence of Cliff is inevitable to connect Jimmy and Allison to the real world. Cliff tries to play the same role in Jimmy's conjugal life as oxygen does to igniting fire. Oxygen does not change nor dies away. Similarly, Cliff's life remains the same as trifle as before but he touches the heart of a fellow friend. The character also enlivens the drama and teaches the viewers or readers how to stay above controversy, how to minimize the conjugal malady, how to remain away from sexual indulgence and how to be loyal and beneficial to friends in real sense. What are the causes of his anger? No particular causes have been mentioned but some inferences may be made from Jimmy's speeches of condemning persons, institutions and the general things. The disparity inequality slash disproportion slash difference between his own working class origin and Allison's upper middle class. His dissatisfaction is due to a routine life with no excitement or variety especially on Sundays. His monotony on Sundays is visualized by his words always the same ritual. Reading the papers, drinking tea, ironing. A few more hours and another week gone. Our youth is slipping away. Still the other reason is the indifference or the complete lack of enthusiasm from Allison and Cliff. If we look back in his childhood, we can see that he lost his father when he was only ten. He visualized his father's death for years, which keeps away his mental peace and makes him angrier. At one point he tells Helena that he had experienced at an early age, which made him angry and helpless. He cannot but continue saying I knew more about, love, betrayal and death, when I was ten years old than you will probably ever know all your life. These all can guarantee anyone to get angry frequently. What is Helena's personality? 
Helena's personality is bold and mysterious. She is valiant, influential, progressive, impulsive, straightforward and outspoken. She scolds Cliff because he does not take any initiative to mitigate the violence and antagonism of Jimmy over Allison. She accuses Cliff directly that he is a silent spectator. Helena also accuses Jimmy straight away. She tells Allison that Jimmy is a savage who will kill Allison if she does not leave him at large. She tells Jimmy openly whatever she thinks of him. Her influence over Allison's leaving is noteworthy. She never falters in any circumstance. She was also progressive because he believes in gender equality. She does not tolerate the dominance or superiority or any misconduct of a husband. She must be considered impulsive and unpremeditated too. Her kissing Jimmy was absolutely sudden and involuntary, though it was mysterious in the sense that she stayed with him in absence of Allison. She protests against Jimmy's atrocity but turns herself into his mistress to our utter surprise. Helena was quite happy with the same Jimmy who was her genuine hatred earlier. It is a little redeeming that she realized her wrongdoing when Allison returned devastated. She regretted and left them as she should. What are Jimmy's redeeming qualities? Apart from his crude, arrogant and irrational speeches against Allison, her parents and brother Nigel, Jimmy has some redeeming qualities. He has a deep affection for Cliff as Jimmy strongly appreciates that Cliff has a big heart. Jimmy also esteems Cliff's solidarity which is absent in Allison and Helena. He believes that solidarity is a quality only the working class belongs to. That is why Jimmy never suspects the relation between Cliff and Allison. He does not take it otherwise, even when Cliff fondles or hugs or even kisses Allison, though she deserves it as she was a virgin before the marriage. It is also noteworthy that Jimmy definitely has a soft feeling for Allison. It becomes obvious when we see he plays the bear and squirrel game with Allison. Jimmy is certainly an unpleasant character in many ways but still he tremendously moves us on some occasions and wins our sympathy and regard. This is why he is a complex and many-sided personality. We get strongly moved when he describes his childhood experience. It was really a significant experience which had taught him more about love, betrayal and death than, he said, Helena would ever learn. The end, you've just watched the video voiced by Ivona, written and filmed by Ida, assistant professor of English at universities. Please consider subscribing if you want more videos. Many thanks indeed.